What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a fun little video about the, well one of, the new armor sets added by the Four Relics of Rivalon DLC gift bag that was announced by Larian not too long ago. So, first up, the armor of Captain Zek Sapor. I, I assume I'm saying that right, I'm terrible with names. That said, this armor set is the first one you will actually be able to access in full as you are able to get it on the island of Fort Joy, which is of course the first act of the game. Now jumping straight into it, you are likely to run into this quest in one of two ways I would seem to be the most obvious. I mean obviously there's several because Larian's amazing at doing that, but organically these are probably the two you're most likely to find first. You can talk to Zalaskar, which is a merchant right outside of Fort Joy proper that you can speak to for uh, a couple of quests involving the origin characters. However, he also acts as a merchant. And if you choose to trade with him, you will find a new book on his inventory called Scourge of the Seas. Now this book details the history of Captain Zek Sapor, which tells us that he was a captain for Brachus, that Brachus Rex gave him an armor set that allowed him to charm enemies, and as a result, the captain went on to become Brachus's slaver, and he used this armor set to basically bring slaves to Brachus Rex. And as a result, the captain got so enamored with the power of his armor that he decided he was going to rob Brachus Rex blind. But before he was able to do this, Brachus caught wind of the plot, foiled it, and permanently imprisoned the captain in a prison, obviously, somewhere on the island. Now from here, you can also run into a small little event south of Zalaskar where you can find an arm lying on the beach. And if you use this arm, it'll actually start pointing towards a specific destination. Now we don't know this at the time when you find the arm, but of course this arm belongs to the captain and the arm will actually point us to the place that the captain was imprisoned. Now, using the magic of YouTube, we're just gonna skip over there. The captain is actually imprisoned in a chest behind the tower of Brachus Rex. So there is an area behind the tower that was previously not really used for much. It was just kind of a little area you could explore. But now there is a chest guarded by a magical barrier here. Now, if you touch the barrier without uh, looking into it, you will actually be cursed. That is to say, you will be hit with the cursed status effect, which of course can be removed with the bless spell. Now, knowing this information or examining the barrier before you touch it will reveal that it's going to curse you if you do so, which we would know if you touched it. Now, knowing that information, it would be a logical jump that bless, which cures curse, can be used on the barrier, which is of course what you have to do. You just have to use bless on this barrier, provided you have the spell from the island already, and that should dispel the barrier, at which point Captain Zek Sapor will jump out. Now, now, he is a bit of a hostile fellow. After a short conversation, we can basically persuade him not to fight us because he will lose, or you have to fight him. That's pretty much it. You can also give him his arm back if you still have it in your inventory. Uh, it didn't really seem to change much, but you can do that. Now, this situation is going to resolve in pretty much one of two ways. You're either going to kill Captain Zek Sapor, or, you know, he's going to leave of his own volition and still be alive. So you can either kill him right here through this battle, or you can talk to him and persuade him not to fight you. There is a third option for this conversation. Um, if you have been to the vault of Brachus Rex, where we know that the captain was actually planning on stealing his soul jar back from the book Scourge of the Seas, if we've been to that vault and we actually have the captain's soul jar, which was recently added as well with this patch, with us, when we talk to him, there's not really a, an option to bring it up in conversation right here in this moment, but you can actually break the jar before this and it will still kill him. And then at that point, if you search the chest, you will find a journal, which will give you the information you need if you didn't just talk to him. So that's also uh, one way this conversation can go. You can just kill him outright once you get his soul jar from the vault and not even bother with this conversation and then loot the chest for the journal, which will then tell you what you need to do next. Now the journal tells us basically everything we already know up to this point, but it also ends by saying this phrase over and over and over again and basically mentions that the armor of his is somewhere on this island. Now, again, using the magic of YouTube to skip forward a little bit, once we get to the other side of the island, the rest of the way, over where the Winter Dragon Slain is, we can find a new cave that's been added. And if we look into it, we find a ship kind of wrecked in a cove area inside this cave. And we can obviously go in. Now, if the captain is dead, all you're gonna do is search this area for his armor and then pick it up that way. If he is alive, 
he's obviously going to want to fight you right here. This is actually the conversation where I think it's more fun to bring up his soul jar because this actually has contextual options for the soul jar. And basically we can be like, well, we've got your soul jar, so I don't think you're gonna be fighting us. Now you can actually uh, trade him the soul jar for his armor, where he'll just give you the armor for his soul jar and then he'll just leave and be like, ah, I hate your guts. So that's an option. You actually don't have to kill the captain at all. That said, he was a slaver and a pretty terrible person. So personally, I think you're probably better off just smashing the soul jar and killing him outright and taking his armor. That's pretty much how this resolves. Either the captain dies or you make a deal with him. I mean, there's pretty much no other way around it at this point. Now that we have the captain's armor, we can inspect it a little bit. Now, each piece gives us fantastic bonuses individually. Honestly, they're pretty good. The hat actually makes you immune to drunk as well as giving you some points in scoundrel. The boots give you movement speed, extra dodge chance, immunity to slipping. The chest piece, of course, gives you some great bonuses as well. But however, unique to this, if you are wearing all three pieces at once, you will actually be given the Tyrant's Charm ability, which is the key piece of the armor set. Now, what this does is basically any enemy that moves within the aura is immediately checked against charm by their magic arm. Flavor text just says it charms them outright. However, that is not entirely accurate as what the game actually does is perform a charm check against their magic armor like it always does when you use charm up to this point. So if you use charm in the game, be through like a, a grenade skill or the actual charm skill itself, it will actually be resisted by magic armor and the same applies to this aura. However, if an enemy without magic armor steps into this aura and moves, then it's going to perform that check and they're going to be charmed. So the flavor text makes it sound a little more useful than I find it actually is in practice as again, it's you have to get rid of all their magic armor, and by the time you destroy something's armor, I mean, you're probably better off just killing it outright rather than trying to charm it. But depending on the situation, it can be really useful. It is a still very cool, useful armor set. And last but not least, once we're wearing the entire set, it brings all of the pieces up to level 8, which I think is pretty cool. So there you go, guys. There is a look at the first armor set added with the four relics of Rivalon quests in the DLC gift bag that was announced not too long ago. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the first set. I am looking into the other ones, but this was the first one I came across and there was quite a bit of information here. So I figured I'd just make that into one video and kind of go from there. So if you guys enjoyed it, by all means, leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube jazz. But thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.